Ladies and gentlemen, the following statement by Mr. Moon Mullins did not necessarily reflect the opinion of anyone in his right mind. Quote, I and K.O. and all the rest of the gang that lives at Plush Bottoms Borden House is just one big happy family. <laughs> the past 23 years, Frank Willard's famous comic strip character, Moon Mullins, has brought entertainment to millions of people. Tonight, Moon and his little brother, K.O., Uncle Willie and Mamie, Lord Plushbottom and his wife, Emmy, are here to entertain you in person. As knife clatters against fork, as spoon rattles in cup, as upper plate clicks against lower plate... We take you to the charming domestic atmosphere of breakfast time at the Plush Bottom Boarding House. Oh! Oh, gone. Hey, Moon, what do you try to do? Put your eye out. That's what you get for leaving your spoon in the cup. If you had any sense, you'd drink it out of your saucer. K.O., that ain't polite. You're quite right, Moonshine. One must always remember one's manners if one is going to be successful in society. Gee, Plushy, you must have a lousy memory. K.O., never mind that. All right, Emmy. But Plushy, talking about society gives me a pain in the... Never mind that, either. Yeah, and lay off cracking about Plushy. Now, if you'd follow his example, you might grow up to be a gentleman. I don't want to be a gentleman, Moon. I want to be a bum like you. <laughs> Oh. oh, you little hero worshiper. But if I didn't know you meant that for a compliment, I'd smash that derby right down around your shoulders. You and who else? My stars. Must we always have these arguments at the breakfast table? Look, we can start now so we'll have something to look forward to at dinner. Say, how long are you goons going to sit there gassing? I got to shampoo them dishes. You may clear the table, Mamie. That's all I do. Put it on and take it off. I'm just a gypsy rose by another name. <laughs> Anybody want any more coffee? Why, yes, maybe, my little flower. I'll have some. Well, there ain't any. <laughs> hey, Mamie, I won't be home to dinner tonight. That's the best news I've heard since the two-way stretch. <laughs> Got a big financial deal down at Dog Face Wallace's School Room, Moon? No, 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 I ain't. I got a date with Miss Peachy. I'm going to take her to a favorite little spot of mine. One of them quiet, romantical little places where we can be close together. Well, you better get good and close. In this weather, you can freeze to death on a park bench. Oh, what matter the weather when romance is in the air? Let the gales blow. Let the snow fall. They'll have their love to keep them warm. Get him. Now, take it easy, Plushy. Take it easy. You'll come down with an attack of blood pressure. Oh, moon, my starry-eyed swain, go forth to your love and know that my heart is with you. For though I fast approach the mellow years of a <coughs> middle age, romance still pounds through my veins. Is that what makes your nose light up? <laughs> K.O., how many times have I told you his lordship's nose got that way from frostbite? Yes, my lad. It happened when I led the first expedition up the icy slopes of Mount Everest. Well, leave this expedition out of this dining room, will you? i got to get these dishes. Hey, why don't you wake up Uncle Willie and make him help you? Wake him up? If I knew where to find that no-good husband of mine, I'd wake him up and put him to sleep the hard way. Mercy, hasn't William been home all night? Holy smoke. Hey, I lent him the loan of me new shoes, what I was going to wear tonight on my date with Miss Peachy. Why don't you wear your old ones and paint your toenails? I can't. I traded them in on me new ones. Pray, uh, what ones are you wearing now, Moonshine? Uh, uh, yours. Uh, the ones with the built-in spats. Oh, oh, yes. The ones I wore when I was received at court. I'll bet they impressed the judge. <laughs> Boy, this is a fine how-do-you-do. Now i got to wait around all day for Uncle Willie. Well, just remember one thing, Moon. When Willie comes home, I'm first. I wish he'd come home right now while I got this tray of dishes in my hand. Lord Peter, perhaps you would give Mamie a hand with the dishes. Uh, well, I... Well, uh, perhaps you don't need your allowance this week. Oh, oh, yes, yes, my job. I'll get it. Flush Bottoms, Borden House. Moonshine Mullins, Esquire speaking. Hello, Moon. Uncle Willie. Hey, where you been all night? And where's my shoes? Oh, your shoes, sir. They're right here with me, Moon. Well, 
Where are you? Right here with the boys. With the boys at Dogface Wallace's pool room? No, the boys at the Who's Gow. Oh, you're in again. Yeah. Well, what do they got you for? Ten days. Unless, of course, some kind friend bails me out. Uh, how much is your bail, Uncle Willie? Ten dollars. So long, Uncle Willie. <laughs> Ain't you got ten dollars, Moon? All except nine dollars and three cents. So long, Uncle Willie. Oh, no, no, don't be hasty now, Moon. It, it just come to me where there's some money. Oh, yeah? Where? Uh, up under the mattress on I and Mamie's bed. So long, Uncle Willie. <laughs> Moon, Moon, are you you're going to let your old Uncle Willie down? You're doggone right. So long, Uncle Willie. Okay, Moon. But your shoes ain't going to walk home by themselves. So long, Moon. But, it, now, wait a minute, Uncle Willie. After all, you are my relative. And Mamie is out in the kitchen washing the dishes. Then all you got to do is sneak upstairs to our room. Now, you say the dough is under the mattress? Yeah. Okay, Uncle Willie, I'll have a try. Uh, meanwhile, you stay right where you are. walk on that squeaky floorboard. Now, let's see. Under the mattress. What a bed. Sounds like a rusty gate. Ah, here's the door. Now, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Mamie. And one for good measure. You worm. <laughs> Bottoms, Borden House, Moonshine, Mullins, Esquire speaking. Hello, Moon? Yeah, Uncle Willie. How'd you make out, Moon? Did you get the ten bucks? Uh, no, not exactly. Oh, what did you get? A conk on the knocking. Uh... And that's nothing to what you're going to get if I don't get them shoes in time for tonight. Why, Moon, you sound as though you think I'm some sort of a crook or something. That I do. That hurts, Moon. Look, I just thought of something else. So long, Uncle Willie. No, no, wait a minute, Moon, wait a minute. I just remember that old banjo of mine. I'll bet a pretty you could hock it for ten skins. I don't think you could get more than five, Uncle Willie. How do you know, Moon? Because that's what helped pay for them shoes of mine you're wearing. Now, don't scuff them up either, Uncle Willie. I want to keep that shine on them. I'll get you out somehow. <laughs> Hey, Kale, if that ball bounces up here in the porch and hits me, I'll punch you right in the nose. Hey, don't be so nervous. Go back to sleep. I ain't sleeping. I got a heavy financial problem to work on. Hi, Emmy. Sleeping again, I see. Hey, where is everybody, Emmy? Mamie's out back doing the wash, and Lord P went down to his brokers. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember he had a hot tip in the fourth at Tropical Park. Is it worth Annie? Well, I should think one would be willing to do one a favor once in a while. How much is one offering one? Well, um, thirty-seven cents. Thirty-seven cents. What a nice round number. Plus, she gives Kale more than that not to tell where the bottles hit. Well, my stars, how did you know about that moonshine? Look, don't worry, it's empty. My stars, his lordship was saving that in case of illness. Well, I ain't been feeling very good myself lately. Now, listen, Kale. If you'll stay home and do what I ask, I'll bring some ice cream home for dinner tonight. Ice cream? That's for kids. What's later? Mm, we'll see. Now, uh, here's what I want you to do. I and Lord Plushbottom are going to the Humane Society costume ball tonight. Lord Plushbottom has ordered a costume. Well, why don't he go just like he is? Nobody believe it. <laughs> His lordship is going as an Indian chief. And I and Mrs. Buddy are going jointly as a lady horse. I'm going over to her house now to try on our costumes. Now, here's what I want you to do, Kia Kale. 
When the man comes with Lord to his Indian chief, you give him this ten dollars. Uh, look, Emmy, being as how I'm older than Kale and got more experience in heavy financial deals, uh, it ought to be logical to anybody that I'm the man to handle the money. Uh, <clears throat> I say it ought to be logical to anybody that I'm the man to... Oh, all right, let Kale handle the money. Now, here you are, Kale. I'm going to Mrs. Buddy's now. You take good care of the money and be careful. Okay, Emmy. Hey, Kale, quit bouncing that ball against the house. You're shaking a building. Well, you know I made it loose. Yeah, what? Mamie throwing you against me. Well, that's different. That's only from the inside. She just happens to miss the door with me. Kale, will you quit bouncing that ball, I tell you? Besides, that's no way to look after them ten bucks. If you're going to move around like that, let me hold it. Then you can run off and play like a good little boy. I ain't no good at imitation. Forget it, Moon. I'm hanging on to the dough like Emmy said. Say, uh, K.O., how'd you like to play a little game with me, huh? What kind of game? Well, come on up here on the porch and I'll show you. What's the game, Moon? Well, this here little game's called Blackjack. Ever play Blackjack, K.O.? <laughs> I don't think so, Moon. Is it like mumbly fake? Well, kind of, except you play it with cards. Now, the idea of this here game is to make your cards total 21, or as near as you can get without going over. Yeah, that sounds like a arithmetic lesson. Uh, maybe, but we can make it more interesting. Oh. Well, we each put half our money in the center, here, and winner, take off. Oh, all I got is this ten bucks semi can be. Okay, oh. Ain't you never heard of beginner's luck? What's that? Well, uh, the best way to explain it is that when you're a beginner, you have luck. You don't mean like last summer when you taught me to shoot craps, do you? Uh, no, no, uh, but, but, no, no. But you wasn't exactly a beginner then. You'd already been playing Pachisi. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kale, I, I tell you what we're going to do. Now, let's put our money out first. Let's see, uh, what's that for ten bucks? Seven. Right. I was just trying to see if you was trying to cheat. Okay, here it is. How much do you got, Moon? Uh, 97 cents. Somehow that don't seem right to me. I got my seven out there, and I only got three bucks left. Oh, look. You ain't putting up a cent of your own money. I'm putting up all of mine. So what? Well, you ain't got nothing to lose. I stand to lose everything. They get wiped out. But what's more, because you're a beginner, I'm going to give you what we call odds. What do you mean, odds? Well, you see, I'm twice as old as you are. Yeah. Now, if I and Lord Plushbottom was playing, he'd have to give me odds, because he's twice as old as me. After all, Kay, ain't we been brothers a long time? Don't remind me. It seems like a lifetime. Now, what do we do, Moon? Well, I'll put a half of my 97 cents on. 29, 30, 31, there. 32 cents. Hey, wait a minute, Moon. If for 97 is 33... That's right, Kale. Hey, for a kid who don't go to school except when I catch it, you know, you're pretty smart. It's plain common sense. I always did say school is only for them to figure. What do we do now, Moon? Well, I deal you two cards, and I take two myself. Hey, what do you got, Kale? I got two tens. Let's see, that makes uh, zero and zero and zero. That's something I never could see, adding zeros. One and two is... One and one is two. That makes... Twenty. That's right. Looks pretty good to me, Moon. What do you got? Why, uh... Twelve. Uh, now, Kale, I'll give you one more card to see if you can make twenty-one. <laughs> what do you know, an eight? Twenty-one. Hey, twenty-one, huh, Moon? Uh, and now I'll take another card. Ten. Ten and twelve makes, uh, twenty-two. You went over, Moon. I guess I went, huh? Oh, uh, Kale, I forgot to tell you. You know, when you got three cards and you got over twenty-one, when you're playing odds, you subtract. What do you mean? Uh, you subtract one. Now, that gives you twenty and me twenty-one, and since I'm the dealer, I win. Well, uh, well, right is right. Can I deal next time, Moon? Why, uh... Yeah, Kale, sure, you can deal. Okay, how do I start? Well, you give me one. You give you one. Give me one. Give you one. You 
See, Kale was just a poor and simple game of give and take. You give. I wouldn't have minded losing that ten bucks, Moon, if it had been mine. Well, since it wasn't yours, what are you worrying about? That means liable to get kind of sore about it. Oh, don't worry about it, Kale. In fact, I'm liable to get kind of sore about it myself. It's on the seat of me pants. Kale, I, I, I got an idea. I wouldn't want you to get in no trouble with Emmy. So, I've been thinking. Hey, Moon, this ain't another game, is it? Uh, no, no, nothing like that. Uh, you know, Kale, Plushy wouldn't look so hot going to that party as an Indian chief. He ain't got the right built for it, for one thing. He ain't got the right build, period. The only thing that fits him is his name, Plush Bottom. Well, uh, he might be able to fit into a suit of armor. Maybe, if we grease it a bit. Oh, hey, uh, uh, I... Well, like I said, I got an idea. Now, it so happens that Pig Ears Lowry got a suit of armor that he bought back from the war. You mean you can get it to lend it to you? Oh, why not? Didn't I lend him the loan of my bathing suit last year? Yeah, but that was a pretty old bathing suit. Well, this is a pretty old suit of armor. Yep, I, I think I'll pay Piggy as a call. You think you'll be home? Well, I'll just have to take a chance on that. Suppose he ain't home. How are you going to get the armor? Well, I'll just have to take a chance. There. I guess it'll be all right here in the hallway. Gee, that's a smoking suit of armor, all right. Good thing Pig Ears was home. Uh, Pig Ears wasn't home. Hey, Moon, you didn't... Now, K.O., you don't think I'd do anything out of the contrary. Do I have to think? Why, you know Pig Ears always says around his place it's always open house. How did you open it? Well, <laughs> I sort of had to break a window a little bit. Uh-oh. Oh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Hiya, plushy. How did you do it? You broke it. When Plesha showed. Rather an unrewarding day. Plating was very slow. Muddy track, huh? Well, the weather was somewhat unsettled. Uh, my word, who's that standing in the corner? Nobody you know, Plushy. Just a suit of armor. It's for you. Why, of course. How silly of me not to recognize it. Oh, I haven't worn one since the Boer War. It's for me. Yeah, Plushy. You're wearing it to the costume ball tonight. Why, I thought I was going as an Indian chief. Well, uh, the Indian chief costume looked kind of crummy, and after all, we don't want to give the Indians a bad name. Do we? No, you're perfectly right, Moonshine, yes. Mm. Well, I gotta be going. Gotta tend to a transaction downtown. You have a nice time this evening, Moon. Thanks, Flushy. So long. <laughs> Yeah, better put some more chalk on your cue, Moon. I don't want to rip up the pool table again. Shh, Uncle Willie. Dogface Wallace might hear you. Uh, he still don't know who did it the last time. Seven ball in the corner. <laughs> what corner did you have in mind, Moon? The street corner? <laughs> Say, it certainly was nice of you to come down and get me out of the sneezer. Ah, uh, it was nothing, Uncle Willie. You'll do it for me. We just happen to know the social graces, that's all. Yeah. It just proves we come from a good family. A loyal family. The kind of family that's the backbone of America. Well, one end of the backbone, at least. <laughs> you know, Uncle Willie, I and you have the same ideas. The same principles and lack of same. You're a lot like me. Oh, Moon, that's a nasty thing to say about anybody. <laughs> oh, you're just modest, Uncle Willie. You're a man with class like me. Why, I'd never go inside a pool parlor except for one thing. What one thing? Pool table. Say, uh, Willie, you better use the bridge on that shot. I say, Willie, you better use... Mm. Nice wood under that felt. <laughs> well, Moon, that's our cue to drop our cues and run along. See you later, nephew. Hey, wait a minute, Uncle Willie. You still got on my shoes. Oh. Gee, Moon, you're going to make me go home barefoot. 
Well, you wouldn't want to wear them squeaky new shoes home anyhow, Uncle Willie. Why not, Moon? Well, I should think one wouldn't want to wear one's squeaky shoes to go sneaking into one's house when one's wife is waiting for one with a frying pan in her hand. Is, is Mamie really waiting for me? Well, she don't use that frying pan for cooking after six o'clock. Mm. Maybe she'll fall asleep, huh? Yeah, uh, fat chance with Plushy rattling home after the ball in his suit of armor. How's that, Moon? Suit of what? A suit of armor. Plushy and Emmy's at the Humane Society costume ball tonight, and his lordship's wearing a suit of armor. I borrowed for him. Suit of armor, huh? Yep. Made of metal? Yep. Covers the whole body? Every inch. Here's your shoes, Moon. Thanks, Uncle Willie. Well, I got a date with Miss Peachy. See you in a funny paper. <laughs> What a lovely ball that was. And when they gave I and Mrs. Buddy first prize for being the best horse there, I just swelled with pride. Oh, and you certainly made a great impression on everybody, Lord T. So distinguished, even without a glass in your hand. It's a shame you had to stand in one place all night long. Oh, uh, right here, driver. Okay, lady. Say, hey, lady, what's the idea of the zoot suit with the swank clank? That is a suit of mail. Well, you order mail, it's back. A suit of mail is a suit of armor. I'll have you know it was worn by men of the Middle Ages. You mean you married a guy younger than yourself? I am referring to the days of old when knighthood was in flower. I don't know, lady. That must have been before my time. The fair 65 cents. Let's see you dig the dough out of that piggy bank sitting behind you. Pay the man, Lord Piggy. Um, Lord uh, Flushbottom. Maybe a can opener would help. I can't seem to get it my money, my dear. What was that? It was just my... Husband, driver. Sounds like he was in a boiler room. But it isn't exactly Buckingham Palace, you know. Oh, here, let me look at my purse. Um, there you are, 55 cents. I'm afraid I ain't got enough change to give you a tip. That's all right, lady. Just get that walking junk pile out of my hat. Come along, Lord dear. <laughs> Let me find my key now. Oh, here it is. Oh, this is a cursing thing off. Well, you'd better take it off in the living room. If you try to go upstairs, you'll wake the whole house. it would be good enough to have me the wrench and the screwdriver, my dear. Well, here you are. Let me help. Well, let's get the helmet off first, gentlemen. That's over. Well, my dear, let's go upstairs. All right, but put that thing down. I should think you'd be tired carrying a battle axe around all evening. After 15 years of matrimony, Emily, one gets accustomed to a battle axe. It's past midnight in the Plush Bottom Boarding House once again, and everybody is safe in bed. Almost everybody, that is. For here comes a striker up the walk. Can't mistake that derby hat. Why, it's Moon. And out of consideration of those who are sleeping, he enters quietly. Gotcha! Mamie! What did you want to go and hit me with that skillet for? Shh. My mistake, Moon. I thought you was an accomplice. A what? An accomplice for that burglar in the parlor. Shh. Uh, Mamie, what's going on here? Well, I thought I heard Willie come in, see? When I come downstairs, 
I noticed that man standing in the parlor. Now, look, Moon. You can see him over there by the window. Yeah. He's a big guy, too. And say, he's got an axe in his hand. I already called the cops. Cops? <clears throat> well, you don't need me, then. I'll just go on back and say goodnight to Miss Peachy again. Moon Mullins, if you make a move to leave me here now, you won't be able to say nothing to Miss Peachy. Oh, maybe Shh. I... Hey, did I just see him move? No. No, I, I don't think so. Say, Mamie, wouldn't it be better if I went out and surrounded the house? Here comes the cops. You got a good grip on your bullet, Mamie? You ought to know. Open up in the name of the law! Well, you don't have to break down the door. Oh, my word, what's going on? Hey, hey where's the breaker? He's in the front room, officer. Oh, no. Don't worry, lady, I got him covered. Come on, lad, you turn on that light. Say, what kind of a gag is this? <laughs> That's my suit of armor. You mean you got us all the way out here for nothing? Hey, wait a minute. What is it, K.O.? I thought I saw that suit of armor move. Hey, it is moving. Oh, uh, hello, folks. William, you worm. What are you doing in that armor? Can't one come into one's own home without one calling the cops? No, one can't. Not even if one thinks one can hide in a suit of armor, you worm. Oh. My stars. That's Emmy's line, Willie. Yeah, but these is my stars. <laughs> Hold your hat. Here we go again. Oh, no. no, no. Oh, I need a name of the law. My stars. Cops on top of cops. Is this the residence of one Moonshine Mullins? Uh, what name was that? Moonshine Mullins. I'd uh, never heard of him. Try next door. You tell him, Moon. Oh, so you're Moon Mullins. <laughs> you want to make something of it? Yeah, I got a warrant here for your arrest. My word, I'll see you. What charge may I ask? Forcible entry, housebreaking, and larceny of one suit of armor. Sounds like a good day's work. But, uh, who, who made out this here charge, officer? Sir? A party name of Marmaduke Lowry. Big ears Lowry. The same. Why, is that... Well, that's the last time I'll lend him my bathing suit. Oh, plush bottom sporting house. K.O. Mullins, bell captain speaking. Hello, K.O.? Hello, Moon. Did you get a nice cell? Yeah, same one as usual. <laughs> How much is your bail? Twenty bucks. Wait a minute, Moon. How come it only costs Uncle Willie ten bucks, and it's costing you twenty? Uh, ten for me, and, uh, <clears throat> ten for the suit of armor. Oh, well, I get it. The cops are giving you what they call odds. So long, Moon. <laughs> So with Moon languishing in the sneezer and with peace in the plush bottom household, at least until next week, we leave our friends to their own devices. And if one wishes to hear what happens next week, one can tune in again. Same time, same station, can't one. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>